Hey artists, let's talk about this color wheel activity. So first and foremost, make sure you put your name at the top of your paper, because if you do this correctly, it will look much like everybody else is in your class. Now this color wheel has no labels on it, but it does have a key at the bottom. So I'm gonna start you off by telling you exactly what this key means. All of the circle shapes are gonna be for primary colors. All of the squares are going to be for secondary colors. Notice the alliteration square secondary, it's on purpose. The triangles are for tertiary colors. Some people call them intermediate, but that's a longer word. So I prefer tertiary. And the blobs are going to be for neutral colors. These are kind of muddy colors, hence the reason that they look like irregular puddles. Now, each of these has a color that's belonged to them and it can rotate any which way, it could work this way, but the order always stays exactly the same. So to stick with me and make it simple, we're gonna start by labeling our primary colors. Do you remember your primary colors? They are red, yellow, and blue. Now, since there are no lines, you can write your labels anywhere that makes you happy, but not inside the circle where you will be painting. These three colors will make everything else on this color wheel. That's why they're called primary colors. When you have an even mix, exactly half and half, of red and blue, you get a secondary color. The same is true for an even mix of red and yellow or blue and yellow. That's why the squares are halfway between. When you mix red and blue, you get purple, also known as violet. Either word is correct. When you mix red and yellow, you get orange. Last but not least, when you mix blue and yellow, you get green. Those three colors are your basic mixes. Depending on the strength of your pigments, that is your paints, they might be a perfect half and half mix or they might require some adjustments. So we'll talk about that when we start painting. The tertiary colors are the more exciting ones. They are a mix of the circle and the square or the primary and the secondary that are on either side of them. Even though they're more exciting colors, they do not get more exciting names. Their names are simply made by hyphenating the primary and the secondary color with the primary color name coming first. I'll give you an example. This color that's a mix of red and orange is called red orange. That's it. So when you get to orange and yellow, what would that be called? Yellow orange. Orange can't come first. Yellow comes first. It's the primary. Between yellow and green, you get yellow green. Between blue and green, you get blue green. Blue and purple make blue purple and last but not least red and purple make red purple so now we have the outside of our color wheel mixed but we have not dealt with the neutrals yet neutrals are colors that are not any of these outside colors because they are made by mixing opposites on the color wheel. I want you to start by labeling your opposites. Red, jump over the puddles, and green are opposites. When you mix them, depending on your green or your red, more often than not, you will get a brown. On any of the blobs, please label it brown. 
brown is a neutral color. Your other next pair of opposites would be purple and yellow. Connect those with an arrow that jumps through the puddles. When you mix them more often than not, you will get a gray. Gray is a neutral color. Last but not least, blue and orange. When you mix them, depending on your orange, you may get something close to black. We'll talk about that when we get there. Notice white is not on here. White is a color of a pigment, but it is not considered a color of light. So we will deal with mixing white with our paints to tint them and make lighter tints in another activity. But for this time, we're simply focusing on the colors that can be made by mixing red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors. Now that we have these labeled, let's talk about how you will paint them. So you will have at your table, red, yellow, and blue paints that you are sharing with other people. You should have a paintbrush. You will need a mixing paper as well as water to rinse your brush with and paper towels for wiping off any excess water. To begin, you're gonna practice painting and applying paint in an appropriate way. So you can use red directly out of the cup to paint in something like red. So first and foremost, when you dip your brush into the paints, you don't need to get paint on the metal part of the handle because notice I don't paint with that. Just like good marker coloring craftsmanship, you wanna begin when you have a lot of paint on your brush by doing a nice crisp edge on the outside of your shape then you can go back and fill it in a little more hurriedly because you have a nice outside edge. You should be trying to keep your paint within the lines. This is your practice, so make it look good. Then, because I'm about to switch colors, I need that water. Make sure you push your br bristles of your brush against the bottom. That'll help loosen up the paint that might be on there. Wipe it dry so you're not putting water in the paints, then I can paint blue the same way. Notice that I'm going for one even smooth coating of paint. It's not uh, gloppy, it's not gonna take a long time to dry. I've spread it out. It's also not watery. I'm not trying to go for watercolor paint. You wanna use this acrylic paint to the best of its abilities, which is even smooth coloration that does not have puddles or glops. I'm gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna dry my brush. This is incredibly important because when you use the yellow paint, this is the one that people most often get dirty. It is a misnomer to say that it's lighter. It's not lighter, but the pigment is less intense. And so if there's anything in it that doesn't belong, it's gonna show up worse than it would in any of the other colors. Once I have even smooth colors on my primaries, we're gonna have to deal with mixing. So notice my brush is gonna go in the water cup when I'm not using it so it doesn't dry out. Also helps to clean it. In order to mix the colors on your color wheel, you're gonna need to use a mixing paper in this case. You might also have a plastic palette that gets washed. What's nice about this is it is disposable. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have a clean brush and then I'm going to scoop some paints that I wanna work with. Let's start with the yellows and the red mixes on the right-hand side of my wheel here onto my mixing paper. This will let me, one, not have to go back to the group cup every single time and wait for my friends to finish. But two, if I make a little mistake and get a little bit of color in that yellow, it's not a big deal because it's mine. So it only messes up me, not everybody else at my table. Now I'm gonna get some red put it on my mixing paper. To begin, let's talk about how to mix orange. You'll notice that yellow is a less intense pigment, as I just mentioned before. The paint gets taken over quickly. So in theory, you should be able to put half yellow and half red and get a perfect juicy orange, but that's not the case with these kind of paints. When you mix them, I took a tiny bit of red, put it with my yellow, and I have a perfect orange. I had like four times more yellow than orange, but it came out just right because 
the yellow just is not as strong as the other pigments of paint. I'm going to paint in that square, paying attention to the outlines, figuring out how to manipulate my brush now to paint in a square instead of a circle. So I have to get into those corners. Slow down and pay attention to your craftsmanship. Once I have that mix, it would be wise to go ahead and deal with my red orange and my yellow orange. Now I do want to say you might be looking at this on your laptop and thinking the color is not quite right. And that might be true because of the way that not only the webcam is reading these colors, but the way that your laptop is displaying the colors. If in doubt about your colors, check with the teacher or check with something printed because looking at colors on screens always alters them a little bit. But now I need to make a yellow orange and a red orange. I have a little bit of orange left on my mixing paper. What I'm going to do to start off is add some more yellow to it. A nice big healthy helping. So I get sort of like a mac and cheese color. And now I have an even more challenging shape to paint in because it's smaller. I'm gonna paint in my yellow orange and when I do that, I'm going to compare to the colors next door. It should be more orange than the yellow circle below it, and it should be more yellow than the orange that it's next to. If it looks like an even mix, I'm good. If it doesn't, I'm going to wait for it to dry, and I'm going to paint over it with a new color. For my red orange, I need something that is more red than this orange, but not all the way red. So I need to be careful about how much I add. Now my brush is dirty, but I'm going to carefully just kind of get a little bit more red here. Didn't make a big mess of my stuff, so that's good. I'm going to mix it in until I feel like I have something that looks good for a red orange. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in my triangle. And I notice right away that it looks just like my orange. I'm not happy. I'm going to add a tiny bit more red, being careful. It doesn't take over. Let's see. It's a little better. One more adjustment. The red can be very strong and it can take over your colors quickly. Remember, you can always adjust once it dries because things do often dry slightly differently. But you should be figuring out how to get your paintbrush to move the paint in ways that you want. So this is practice mixing colors and painting inside the lines. Once I'm done with these, I can follow the same procedure for the other colors. I can mix blue and red to make a nice purple. Then I can change part of it to a red purple and part of it to a blue purple. I can then mix blue and yellow to make my green, make some of it more yellow green, some of it more blue green. The neutrals are where things get a little bit tricky. Depending on the mixes that you have in front of you affects how you're able to make your neutrals. So only when you have these outside colors done, your pretty colors, I like to say, should you attempt the neutrals or you might end up making a mess of your mixing palette. When we started, I said if you mix blue and orange, you're more likely to get something that's nearing a black. Now I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to get black black but you can get a very, very dark gray that you can pass off as black. I don't have any blue on my mixing paper right now, so I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna get some. And since you're gonna be working on neutrals after all these nice colors are done, you can end up kind of making a mess of your palette because these are the last colors you need to do. Now, I know that I've put some blue in my orange. I'm gonna get something that nears brown, gray, or black. This is where you have to do a lot of decision making. Right now, what I've created looks like green. The opposite of green is red. To make this a neutral, I need to add some red. Be careful how much you add. Sometimes if you add too much, you go back the other way. All right, now this looks like, I was gonna say purple, but I actually kinda really like it. If it had been too purple, we would've added purple's opposite, which is yellow. But instead, I have a feeling that this is going to look great on paper. I'm going to go ahead and, oh yeah, paint this in right here. Notice it's not a perfect black, but it's pretty good for a self-made black. Now, how do you get a gray? 
you're going to mix purple and yellow. You'll see that having a slightly more yellowy influence will sort of lighten up that color, as we could say. Please avoid watering down your paints if you run out. Notice I'm getting pretty low over here. But adding water, again, is going to make this look like watercolor and not like acrylic. Eventually, I should finish and get sort of like this example here. So you can see all my colors are painted in. My tertiary colors look like a nice even split of what's on either side of them. I have a brown, gray, and black. I have all of my complementary colors labeled with my lines or my arrows connecting them through the middle. And this is a real student example. So if you're able to keep the paint within the lines like this real student, you're probably okay. If it's much worse than this, you need to take some more time to practice controlling that paintbrush. That is how to complete your color wheel worksheet 